morning, right? Now, to help us understand and educate us about the um, identities, whether human, personal, organizational, mm -hmm. national, or cultural identities, I have with me in the studio today an international mm -hmm. author and public speaker who has written um, books and has a book right now on this issue. But basically, how understanding identities can help us in our life, I have with me Omada King. Welcome to Morning Right. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I was talking to him, to you, before we started the program. I said something about personal, human, organizational, national, cultural identities. And I'm wondering, there's so many. So why is identity something that is we should take in service? Why, why is it key, identity? Thank you very much for this privilege and the opportunity. I, identity is, um, uh, the issue of identity or the subject of identity is an, an issue that boils and boils down to uh, the essence of our being as human being um, making up families organizations nations and the world at large it is important because if we don't understand identity as a concept as a subject if we don't understand who we are as individuals and why we exist both as individuals and as organizations and as nations um, the purpose of our being will be defeated. Actually, identity has been defined by me as the true essence of a being or a teen. It is that which reveals distinctiveness, capabilities, conception. It can be national, cultural, or spiritual. It is a character expressed knowingly or unknowingly. And it can belong to a particular indi individual or uh, a social group or a category of people. Mm. When you say category of people, like if you have to define a national identity, what will you say? A national identity, um, I would define national identity as um, um, that which reflects uh, the will, the collective will of a people within a geographical location to live together, work together, and exercise sovereignty. Hmm. Okay, so but how can that, how can we marry that with our personal and human identity? Actually, um, both human identity, personal identity, cultural, natural, uh, national identity, they are all interrelated. It is individuals that make up a nation. It is individuals that also make up a nation, a, um, an organization. And uh, these individuals have their uniqueness, they have their differences. Um, um, maybe when you have ethnic groups and tribes uh, in, in, in a nation, forming a nation, making a nation, these individuals, these groups will also have their cultures, they will have their uniqueness, their distinctiveness. If, if, you, must, if you must maximize your being both as an individual and as a nation or as an organization, you don't only have an objective, you don't only set up a goal, you don't only have vision, you also need to understand your uniqueness. You need also to be able to make some decisions. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that there are treasures that are locked up in human identity. There are treasures that, that are locked up in, in personal identity. There are treasures that are locked up in national identity. And all of these, um, it could be human resources, it could be natural resources. And all of these needs to be understood, identified, harnessed, developed and manage properly. If you don't manage identity properly, you will have crises, you will have abuses, you will have a lot of pains. And the truth of the matter is this, this is a personal responsibility. As individuals and as a nation, and um, any organization for that matter, if, if we must um, maximize our being um, in particular, we, we, must, we must work hard at defining who we are, and make certain commitments to developing and harnessing and protecting our unity. Hmm. You know, sometimes um, when we talk 
for instance, some of the things you've said now have, um, some of the things you've said have captured the power and purpose of um, identity. And um, most times when we listen to public speakers like you or we read books from the shelf, they paint scenarios that make it, that gives us tips and makes it easy for us to achieve some of the targets we can set in order to uh, stay in line with our personal and national identity. So you have written a book to talk about this. So have you, do you, can you tell us about the way you have captured this in your book that can bring the reality to us? Yeah, actually the book, The Purpose and Power of Identity by me is um, it's a 100 and, it's a 131 page book which was originally published in the United Kingdom and released simultaneously in the United Kingdom and in the U.S. And then subsequently, a Nigerian publisher just picked it up and it has been reproduced in China and brought back into the country. It has about seven chapters which talk, begins with uh, understanding identity. That's chapter one. In chapter two, you, you see the treasures of identity. Chapter three, the exploit of identity. Chapter four, you see um, the, the, battle for, the battle of identity or the battle for identity. Then on and on, you, you see um, a lot in the book. Do you have scenarios that can help us guess the reality of cases that you have presented in your book? I don't know. Because like I said, sometimes when you read some of these books, yeah. You, it's easy. It's it's easy to read and understand, but the practicality is just different. Yes, yes. Actually, the book is inspirational. It is motivational. It is educational. And the truth of the matter is, um, a book that has no phase of practicality in it, I, I don't think is worth reading. Um, a book should be able to educate, not just intellectually, but also have tips to guide in practical application. Um, if you're asking me for tips or scenarios now, you may need to be very specific. Are you talking about uh, scenarios that would uh, explain or um, express human identity or in personal your, in, identity? In, in the book you've Yeah, written. in the book we have uh, scenarios and tips that, and uh, uh, practical uh, references to issues that has to do with personal or human identity. We also have scenarios and uh, references to Issues that has to do with organizational identity or branding and national identity and uh, um, all of that. But if, if, if you expect a scenario now, for example, if you want to talk about a human being, uh, you talk about a child who is born to a family and the child is born a, a child, a, a, an infant. He, he doesn't really know anything about him or herself. The child is born and is grown in a family. The family educate and nurture the child, the parents now. But do you have case studies like that? In of your course, I, I, do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Okay, so like how long did it take you to write this book? The, the book, The Purpose and Power of Identity, which is subtitled Exploring the Realities and Possibilities of Our Being, is my sixth book. It took me like, I should say 35 years, is my life work. 35, 35 years? 35 years, I, I, I'm a young man, I'm 35 years old. Everything here is what I have learned since I was born up till now my experiences, my interactions, my researches that I have made, and all of that. Hmm. Wow, 35 years. That's um, really um, interesting. Now, I'm just wondering, you, you talked about research and your experiences over the years, and with the issue of um, identity, and with the um, organizations that we have in the developing world today growing, how can it help? You know, organizations in molding the, uh, the the kind of staff and personnel that they employ. Um, for example, every organization exists to uh, achieve certain objectives and goals, and uh, some organizations are service related, some are product related, and some are, some exist to uh, serve, render services, some to manufacture and produce goods. And uh, if an organization was uh, um, express and, and manufacture, or sorry, if an organization must express and achieve its organizational or established objectives, it, it, it must first of all begin by um, identifying its strength and, and, um, and resources and also define the limits of its um, um, achievements and what it intends to achieve. You also need to be sure you have identified the resources that you have 
on ground to achieve what you want to achieve. And also, you need to identify what you must do to achieve that objective and the obstacles and the challenges you'll be confronted with and, and the best ways to reach your audience or your market, if I should use the word. Mm -hmm. And once all of these are put in place and uh, you define what you want to achieve, uh, you will definitely begin, have to begin and of course, you need to identify who in the organization will play what, what role, who will do what, and when, and how. And when all of this is done uh, and communicated, uh, we, we maximize our capabilities and the essence of our being, both as, as a nation as an organization. Hmm. Then, in essence, if we have to, if we're striving for prosperity and success in everything we do, identifying the, our purpose and um, knowing what our identity is and how it relates to what we're doing is important. And so for this book you've written, do you, did you have a target group that you were um, focusing on when you wrote the book at the back of your mind? Can anybody read the book? Actually, um, if I say what I, I had, I have a goal. I have an audience. In, in mind before I wrote the book. And my audience is the human being. Because it is human beings that make up a family, that make up an organization and a nation. And when the human beings that we have understand identity and understand all that it entails and what it holds and its responsibilities and benefits and, and uh, all that is required, then we have good organizations. We, we live in a peaceful society. If we all do what we ought to do, we have a, a good society. And uh, actually, uh, the audience that I have and the people that will benefit from this book is everybody. Uh, Tell Magazine has done a review of the book. They read through their editors and uh, writers read through the book. And they said that the book is good, is a must read for everyone, and it profits anybody who is professionally and otherwise. So professionals read it and... Uh, you can also read it for uh, leisure. Read it for leisure, of course. For it, That is why it's inspirational. Um, I talk about branding here. I talk about both organizational branding, national branding, um, which is becoming something else these days. Um, but branding, you don't just, you don't just uh, project an image that you have not identified, developed, and you are harnessing. You don't just project it. Branding is all about um, um, trying to manage... Uh, uh, your identity, projecting an image and sending out messages of who you are and what you are and what you can do. But this has to begin by identifying certain things, putting certain things in place, developing the resources and uh, the capabilities that you have and then consciously developing values and making commitments to them. You don't just, you don't just uh, project an image and then, and then believe that you get the best of it because the people who get to know about what you are saying, they will want to maybe mm. experience it, they come in contact, they want to, to, to try to see if, they, if what you say you have and who you say you are, if it is true. Hmm. And then That's if they come around and they, they have an experience, an encounter with what you say you have produced or who you say you are, or what you say you are, and then it, 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 it's not fulfilling what you say it is, um, you get embarrassed, you get disappointed, okay. you, people get frustrated. It becomes also a, a danger for you that is projecting such image. Yeah, yeah, that, that's very that's an important point you've made. So, in projecting our national identity, we have to package ourselves well before we start um, selling ourselves. Of course, because of you course. don't give what you don't have. Of course, of Thank course. you for coming to morning, right? And um, good luck with your book. Thank you. Very much.